Well, so um, first of all, my name is not Lauren Carter. <laughs> That's the, the name on our uh, business Zoom account at OMAFRA, the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, which is where I work. Um, I'm the Greenhouse Floriculture Integrated Pest Management Specialist there. So Mike Short, who um, works for Ecohabitat Agri-Services, which is a consulting company um, in the Niagara region, specializing with floriculture and nursery crops. Uh, we've sort of alternated over the years of, um, or collaborated in running these workshops. And usually they're hands-on workshops where we actually show growers um, uh, the pests under a microscope and the biocontrol agents um, and it's, it's always good to see the, those kinds of things in person, but obviously with COVID, we're not able to do that kind of thing this year. So we decided to turn it virtual, um, update the information, hopefully give you some tips and tricks. Um, obviously it's no supplement for in-person. We hope to do that again next year, but hopefully this will tide people over. And um, uh, also with it being available on demand, it's something that you can watch um, later if you wanna refresh yourself on something. Uh, Mike, do you have anything to add before we sort of go into the intro or basics of IPM? Yeah, I, I, I don't know where uh, our participants are from. Uh, we are based in Ontario, Canada. So uh, whatever information that we give out is based on our work here. Um, so uh, probably why that makes a difference is if you are uh, writing in a question uh, in the Q&A, um, just put where you're from. Uh, if you have a specific pest uh, uh, question, uh, write where the location is and what your crop is. And uh, we'll have a better or faster way of, um, of answering that question. So um, welcome, uh, everyone. And um, I uh, look forward to uh, getting back into the regular uh, classroom next year. Next year, by the way, will be our 30th anniversary of this workshop so maybe there'll be some uh, retro features added next year hopefully we're in person that means everything's gotten back to normal so thank you yeah that would be great <laughs> um i can't wait to get back to sort of like a normal uh situation so just a few housekeeping things at first. Um, as Mike mentioned, um, we'd like you to use the Q&A, which is on, uh, it should be along the menu bar on the bottom of your screen if you wanna type in questions. And that's just because of the numbers of users. If you use the chat, it can get a little confusing because we have to scroll back. But please feel free to use the chat if you need or want technical assistance or want to comment. Um, that's more what that's for. Also with the Q&A, um, you're able to see other people's questions. So if you notice someone's asked a, a question very similar to yours already, um, I think you can upvote them if you want us to focus on that question. So that's a good tool to know. Um, we have an agenda that we're gonna sort of be posting after we do each talk. Um, it's a rough guideline only. We're gonna do our best to keep to the schedule. Obviously, Mike and I are gonna sort of give each other a five minute warning kind of situation. Um, but if you're planning on like, you know, leaving for a few minutes and coming back um, to hit a specific section, we might be a little off on that. So um, it's better if you sort of just stay put and watch the whole thing if possible. Uh, also remember right now, so you should be seeing my slides on the screen and Mike and I's heads <laughs> talking. Um, if and my our garden. Head, yeah, and Mike's garden and my little house plants. Um, if our heads are blocking any content that you want to see, just remember that you can um, scroll your mouse over the top and then there'll be a black bar and you can move us around the screen. Um, so if you want to see something, uh, just feel free to move it to wherever it's um, least annoying. Uh, lastly, um, again, I, I mentioned earlier, the recording will be available, available to all registrants on a later date. We might do some editing and break it up into sections, um, but immediately after this, it should be available as um, the full content. All right, so that's our little housekeeping stuff. For the agenda, what we're hoping to do um, is in the morning, go through the basics of IPM, 
tips for successful scouting and answer where do pesticides fit in and then get into our first pest, which is aphid IPM. And then we're gonna break for questions and then we'll have a half hour break for lunch. And in the afternoon, we're gonna focus mostly on pests. So mites, white fly and thrips, some of the big ones, and then also have a discussion about pests that can disrupt IPM programs and then finish with another um, question and answer period. So we'll do our best to stick to this schedule. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is give you a little bit, bit of a background on Mike and myself, just so you know who you're talking to <laughs> and what our expertise is. Um, so again, my name is Dr. Sarah Jendrzyk. I work for the Ontario Ministry of Food and Agriculture. Um, and I have the very interesting job of pretty much being the only extension specialist in the world that focuses exclusively on floriculture, integrated pest management. I don't have any other commodities. This is sort of like my bread and butter. Um, I started at the University of Guelph where I worked on Atheta coriaria, which is a predatory beetle some of you may use. And I worked on integrating it into current IPM programs right after it was commercialized. So that was really interesting to be involved in that on the ground floor. I did my PhD at Cornell on foxglove aphid, which was an emerging pest at the time, um, trying to find solutions for it, which we did not. I just found a bunch of things that didn't work, but it still was very educational. And then I did my postdoc at NC State uh, working on thrips. And then I got the call um, that there was a job available back here. And considering I had pretty much stalked my predecessor in his career, um, this ended up being um, a perfect fit. And in the meantime, uh, between uh, my master's and my PhD, I actually worked for Mike Short um, for a few years uh, when we did some research together. And so Mike, um, I'll let Mike talk about himself, but you can see some of the, the highlights on the screen. Mike, I stole this picture from the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one, I think that's <laughs> I think you're like, I didn't give you that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. I love talking about myself. Um, not really. Um, so yeah, we st I started uh, EcoHabitat uh, Agri Services back in the '90s uh, in Ontario. Um, and in those days, it was uh, pest control by the seat of your pants and a lot of spraying. Uh, we were able to. Uh, adapt uh, what we knew in uh, greenhouse vegetables into uh, floriculture and I purposely picked floriculture because you see by me sitting in my garden I'm uh, that's my first uh, passion uh, and uh, we uh, just over time we were able to uh, uh, customize IPM programs that cut down on pesticides by about at least 90 percent and uh, uh, able to give uh, habitat for the biocontrol uh, that we use today. And uh, today in Ontario, there is uh, it's quite a change now. Uh, pretty much everybody's using biocontrol and IPM, and uh, it's it's uh, nowhere near what it was like when um, I had my boots on the ground in those early days. So yeah, I've been in business for. Um, approaching 25 years so yeah it's kind of crazy yeah. when you add our, our add our time together i don't like to think about that but yeah i've been studying yeah. ipm for um 18 years now so in floriculture so and sarah was one of my best employees so <laughs> she paid me to say that <laughs> i paid him yeah 